Welcome back to the single malt review as we return to Ireland to sample some wares from Jameson, easily mm -hmm. one of the iconic Irish whiskey distillers. Probably really the iconic Irish whiskey distiller, yes. really, or Irish whiskey brand, we should say. They're not strictly a uh, distiller. They do, of course, distill, but you won't find a Jameson distillery. Um, yes, continuing our uh, New Year's resolution to include some more much requested and rightfully so, Irish whiskey, because yes. it really is very much its own thing. And as I have tasted more of them, and as we are about to find out, they make some really pretty interesting stuff. Now this one, it's, um, it looks a lot like just a bottle of Jameson, but it is in fact part of their, what do they call it? The Caskmates, Caskmates series. series, which is a bit of a barrel exchange program, yeah. I guess you could say. You know a bit more about this than I yeah, do. Yeah, Jameson have been for a while, Palacio basically selling on or donating their ex whiskey barrels for use in craft brewing. And uh, whiskey barrel aged beer can be phenomenal, and it's taking off, especially in craft beer circles, you get phenomenal character out of a whiskey barrel when you pop some beer in it for a time. And yet, yeah, just to complete the circle, Jameson are then taking back some of these barrels these beer-infused whiskey barrels, and using those barrels to finish off, you know, for finishing their classic Irish whiskey. Mm. So you get a little bit of the beer character laid on top of the whiskey character, and then the whiskey is then implanted into that barrel to, yeah, to, to just reap what it can. Now this one is IPA, which is a very odd choice. Um, one, because IPAs and whiskies not really something you consider going hand in hand. Secondarily, when was the last IPA you had which had been in a barrel? There's very, very precious few of them undergo barrel there treatment. There are a few and far between, yeah. It's not a style that lends itself too well to heavy barrel aging, but yeah. it does happen occasionally. I mean, I mean, in the modern world, almost no beer goes into barrel. I mean, no beer goes into barrel as a, as a typical part of its um, process. Maybe, maybe sort of barley wines, vintage ales, you know, barrel a bit, aged of, um, bit of yeah. Fuller's Suffolk Strong might go in there as part of its process, but um, normally barrel aging, barrel fermentation is relegated to the very, very special craft beers these days, and then it's almost um, almost exclusively dark beers, sort of stouts, yeah. uh, big heavy stouts, normally stouts, porters, um, maybe barley wine on the outside. Um, Jameson, though we have seen examples Jameson, IPA, though we have seen examples of it, usually the last thing you'd see going into a cask, it's just yep. not that sort of beer. They're normally tank fermented, super fresh, sold super fresh. The idea of aging an IPA would seem to be sacrilege, at least mm. amongst the uh, sort of new world IPA. When you want something that's got heavily, freshly hop driven flavours to it. Yeah. yeah. It's also a weird choice for seasoning a whiskey. Um, as someone who was once put well, who, who once consulted um, to put together a beer and whiskey tasting with a brewer who has made famously almost exclusively IPAs, it was a hell of a time. It's not really, um, it's not really a natural companion, but all of this is a prelude to me saying this is amazing. What Jameson mm -hmm. has done here is the mind just boggles. This is, I've tried Jameson in the past, um, we, haven't, we haven't reviewed Jameson, it's been ages since I've had any, any Jameson or any Middleton, mm -hmm. uh, which I'll, I'll get into why, um, you know, names for various things as we go on, but what they've been able to achieve here is just weird mm -hmm. how much it's changed the whiskey, which we will, which we will um, find yeah. out in due course. I did a few years ago try an earlier entry in the Castmate series, which was Jameson's that has been finished in a barrel which previously held Irish Stout, a boutique craft stout mm. which was matured in Jameson's barrels. And that imported lots of lovely, rich, dark, chocolatey notes uh, to the whiskey, which were complemented really nicely. It kind of enhanced you got all the best parts of stout. And I'm very much a dark beer fan, so that worked very well for me. I'll hopefully bring that uh, text review up on our Facebook page in due course and uh, revive that oh, one. There you go. Hmm. Now I, I say um, I say I say Middleton because um, Jameson, though there is a you can go on the tour in fact of the Jameson's Distillery in Dublin, uh, it's not an operating distillery has not been for a very long time. Uh, Jameson is a brand name, 
uh, where this whiskey is made or where the m components, the malt components of this whiskey are made is the Middleton in uh, County Cork in Ireland. And um, that is a very, very, very big production distillery. I often say I compare Irish distilling with American, or maybe I should compare American with Ireland because that's probably where it began. They probably adopted the Irish model because a lot of the early American distilleries were probably Irish. With one distillery produces a lot of yeah. bourbon for a lot of different brands. And so they, they, take, they take that sort of um, direction where there isn't many... Irish distilleries. Um, there's not one for each brand name like there is in Scotland. There's a few and they make a great many. Um, this also produces, I believe, actually no I won't, I won't make that claim. Um, uh, we recently did Paddy's which is another example of a brand name but it did not come from the Paddy's distillery. There is no Paddy distillery. Uh, there's about um, four or five I think in Ireland. Some are, some are like Connemara, some are their own sort of thing and they make their own product. Most of them use the bourbon model, which is they are big factory distillers, and they will crank out a whole range of products. Um, Jameson, well, Middleton, most famous for Jameson, and of course Red Breast, which is their pure pot still, which is not not single malt. It's all a bit um, convoluted, but we'll do a we'll do a um, 101 on Irish whiskey in the fullness of time once I can find that jolly bottle uh, of Bushmills 10, which I've been hunting. But that's still in the works. Anyway, anyway, I'll um, I won't dance around this any further. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to embrace the weirdness that is this whiskey? I've got a bit of head start and part of my snoot right into that. Oh, there is a um, pervasive but gentle edge of hops throughout that. I like. I've said before, I'm a dark beer fan. I also do like a very hop forward pale ale as well. It is. It's ah. actually hoppy. Yeah. And how this has happened, I. It's left a lot of that goodness, a really lot of the oils know. leached into the barrel, and it's almost like they got some of the beer into the whiskey. And it's not just hoppy either; just from yeah. the just from the first nose of this whiskey, it's not so much the the really really bogglingly weird thing about this is not itself on its own. Taken as its own thing, it's like, well, this is a really sort of herbaceous, um, interesting whiskey. Uh, the real weirdness comes from comparing this to straight Jameson, which could not be more sort of a straight-laced, yeah. I think it's actually kind of a boring, um, mellow Irish whiskey. This is so far away from what Jameson normal is. It's a shame we don't have one here to do a comparison, but I, I don't possess any at this present time. This is so, so different. Um, it's just quite, quite profound what mm. they've been able to achieve. Uh, in terms of other things on the nose, oh, we should say, um, coloured chill hills it, obviously. Yeah. Like, what a, 40 what a, what a ridiculous yeah, colour for yeah. a, probably a five to eight year old whiskey to be. Um, there is, weirdly enough, Irish moss on here hmm. as well. It's almost got a... There is a little bit of it. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a licorice almost a cough medicine mm. element to this. It's a, like a... You've had one of those Irish moss sort of jubes with yes. the you know sugar sugar dusted kind of things. Yeah, it's it's really, really its own thing. A little bit of the undistilled malt as well, which I would assume mm. the IPA is contributing to. Whoa, that is unbelievably fruity. Yeah, it's, it's full of candied orange, full of boiled sweets, jubes again. It's ah. full of, like this is, I can, I'm going to come back to this again and again. This is weird whiskey. It is it's weird outlandish. because this yeah. is really good. The amount of flavour yes. they've packed into this is, it really does astonish mm. the mind and confound the senses. This is so far away from normal tired Jameson that it's just mm. crazy what they've made. And to think made. that all this extra flavour has come just by finishing this whiskey in a Jameson's barrel, which for a time yeah. held some India Pale Ale. I don't know if they accidentally forgot about this and it sat around for an extra year of finishing or something, but this is, in terms of the oak character, it's just gone bananas. Yes. Ah. Which, incidentally, is a note you can pick up. Yes, lots of, um, a little bit of fresh banana, a lot of sort of artificial banana ester flavor, yeah, which is a lot of, actually really tasty. A lot of, a lot of sort of banana chew yeah. in there. And yeah, in addition to just this fruit basket of um, really, really sort of bouncy, ripe red fruits. And red fruits are something you don't get in Irish whiskey almost yeah. at all. It is 
there's not so much hoppy character here, but I assume well, it probably is the hops manifesting as the fruity elements. But it's none of that straight up mm. dank or bitter hops. Yeah, no, there's, there's no there's yeah. no bitterness at all. But yeah. I mean the amount of the amount of actual hop oil, you know, alpha oils from mm. hops, um, must be just abjectly microscopic. Yeah. Because these are not small barrels um, that have been, you know, the whiskey's been tipped into here. So even if they, even if they left a wee pool in the bottom, that's that's not. It's a fraction. It's an absolute fraction. So the fact that it's imparting just so much, it's so weird. I just mm. don't know how it's happened. Yeah, I, um, I'd say up front, if you're a sort of whiskey purist and you want to taste Irish whiskey as God intended, you might say. This is not the way this. This, this, yeah, will, no, this, this is... will disgust and frighten you probably. But if you want to taste something which is just a a new twist on a beloved classic, and it does something radically different, then absolutely, this the transformation is so profound. Yeah, this, this is I can only I'm sure it didn't, but I just keep thinking something must have gone wrong mm -hmm. in the making of this. It, they somehow came out too interesting. Well, somehow those barrels have um, just I don't know bogarted all the well, hobby goodness out of it. Well, they were they accidentally used fresh barrels for the beer or something, and they didn't actually have. I, I don't know, but so much flavour has gone yeah. with this whiskey, it's just not even Jameson's anymore, it's its own thing. Um, it's like they've somehow tipped in all the exciting flavours, someone's pulled the wrong lever, or something has gone wrong here because Jameson has no right being as interesting or as good as this whiskey is. It is the oops all berries of Jameson's whiskey, it really, really is. Um, you can look that up later, but our American clients will know exactly what I mean. Um, mm. I'm a little baffled myself, but okay. No, no, it's yeah. a. Um, there's, this isn't the this isn't the serial podcast, so I won't go into the whole right. diatribe. But you know what I mean. Hmm. Um, yeah, it is, if anything, it is, it's like if anyone who knows uh, fruit bursts, very iconic, uh, yeah. chewy, sweet in this country. This is like someone has tipped a packet of fruit bursts into a whiskey barrel. Fruit bursts, or if you're in um, Japan or America, there's a lot of high chew going on in oh. here, which is probably more analogous over there. Yeah, yeah, it's. It's wild. It's wild unlike basically most of what we taste here. It's wild on its own, and it's just super wild considering what it is. It's like we got a bottle of Johnny Walker Red, and it tasted like, I don't know, Glendronic or something. It's just crazy how different this and is. And compare it to the uh, Stout edition of the Castmate series, where the Stout influence was pervasive, but it was subtle and complementary. In this case, it's the beer influence is transformative. It has really utterly changed the underlying whiskey. Yeah, I, it, it, yeah, it, confounding, but luckily, yeah. thankfully, confoundingly good. Um, mm. And if you're going to be confounded, that's the, it's always the ideal. Yes. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's always better if it's a good surprise. Um, oh. From the from the moment, yeah, you know, from the moment I opened and tasted this bottle, I think I just. I think I, I was audibly, I was in, sitting on my own, but I, I think an audible huh actually came out of my mouth when I tried this. And I am not a man normally um, driven to sort of, I'm not someone that laughs in the cinema, I'll tell you that much. Um, so to get an to get a, a, a unconscious response out of me on tasting something, that's really, that's something. Um, scores, this is going to be just difficult to score. I've been thinking about this for days, what score I should give this, because... Is it is it good because it's so just ridiculous, or is it bad because it's on paper terrible Jameson? It's terrible Jameson because it's so good, um, or is it the best Jameson? I don't know. Um, can you possibly go first while I put the finishing sure, touches on? Sure. This it? is a just such a radical twist on the whole barrel finishing of uh, whiskey in an unusual cask, but also just it's. You might think it's a betrayal or a defiance of the Jameson's norm because it's so unlike Irish whiskey, but at the same time, it is very much an Irish whiskey that's just been taken in a radical new direction by a subtle twist. It's just a little bit of a collab with craft brewing. And, well, I think it's good overall. It is hugely different, but the difference is tasty, the difference is interesting, and provides good insights into just what, you know, what can happen to a barrel with a little bit of seasoning then happened to a whiskey with a little bit of seasoning in that same barrel. Mm. And I rate it 88. Yeah, it's. I'm not going to be far off. I think I'm even 89 on this one. Oh. It's like, it's a beautiful accident almost. It's like a car mm. flipping off the road, flying through the air and landing in the parking space. It's just such an... It can only be this beautiful fluke. Um, 
that I don't know if we're ever going to see again. I don't know if the next batch is going mm. to be like this. If it is, I will be tremendously surprised and never buy normal Jameson again. Um, because this is just such a... This is almost a style unto itself. It's like they invented a new style of whiskey. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, here's bourbon matured, here's sherry matured, and here's IPA cask matured whiskey. It is so much its own thing mm. that it almost deserves its own category. Uh, but it's it's fantastic. It's so fantastic. And I would... It's cheap as well. These, these are these are dirt cheap. They're a little more than your regular Jameson, but not by a hell of a lot. Um, if you can find one of these, I would get it just for just for posterity, really. Yeah. Um, everyone who's even remotely interested in Jameson or weird whiskey should try this uh, because it is an experience that I have not encountered for maybe ever. I have not had something so. Um, sort of so so outside of my expectations for what it's going to taste like. The last time I had such a challenging sort of confrontational experience with a barrel aged beverage would be earlier in 2018 I tried a New Zealand triple IPA and 11% IPA that had been mm. matured in a gin barrel and this thing was again it blew all expectations out of the water it tasted like a strong G&T gradually turning into an unbelievably hoppy, strong pale ale over time. It was worlds apart from either its, of its constituent components, but they both were present front and centre throughout yeah. the experience. Um, the, only, the only thing that eludes me now is I really want to taste the IPA that was in those barrels. Yeah, oh, I, want yes. to try the other, I want to try the other piece of the jigsaw. Mm, I don't know what the out, hop mixture was. What actually, I yeah. want to find out what beer did this mm. and how it did this. I'm probably not going to get that um, chance, but uh, yeah, if anyone has a hookup for uh, where this beer ended up and mm. whether even something remotely um, facsimilis is available, I would go to some lengths to find the APA that wrought and that wrought what it did on this otherwise innocuous bottle of Jameson's. But, uh, yeah, boy, um, exciting stuff, 2019 mm. at the Single Malt Review. I cannot promise that all um, Irish whiskey reviews are going to be as wild as that one, but, um, boy, I'm glad we got to try this one. Um, to think if I'd just gone, eh, and grabbed something else, I would have never had this just roller coaster of an experience, but um, that's kind of just how things go sometimes. Uh, so, you know, put yourself out there, try something a bit different, and sometimes you're going to get really, really surprised like we were with this one. And it's yes. uh, usually a good thing, although, you know, there's the other, there's always the bad surprise, but hey, uh, you win some, you lose some. Slanger, we will be right back with something less surprising.